Jesus Christ our Lord. And it is a great and beautiful day. Wow, we couldn't ask for better weather today. It was a beautiful spring day. And we're so thankful and so happy that all of you could join us today. So as we're getting ready to start, let's open with prayer if you join me. Father, we thank you so much that you have given us this day, Lord, to celebrate you, to celebrate the victory over sin and death that you alone have provided for each one of us. Father, I pray that you may be glorified and honored today through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. You have some booklets in front of you, and we're going to mostly follow the order of that booklet. Um, you'll see that our first and opening song is crown him with many crowns and there are the words written for you in the book if you'd like to follow along one one other important thing where are the jelly beans <laughs> in the eggs in the eggs okay okay all right save me some now that's that's important
right, so this next song is a rather new song. Um, it's called Hosanna. And that word Hosanna, it means save us, Lord, to the uttermost. Save us to the highest. That's what we want to say to our Lord. You have saved us. You have saved us by your death on the cross, by your sacrificial blood, and by your resurrection from the grave, which we celebrate today. It's not going to be a long message. 
It's not going to be a message that you haven't heard before. It's Resurrection Day. We're going to talk about Easter. We're going to talk about all the things that make Easter special, especially the resurrection. You know, many people understand that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, but they don't realize the significance of the resurrection. Why was it important and necessary for him to rise again from the dead? So we're going to talk about those things today. I do have um, a lot of scripture, which I won't apologize for, because you don't have to believe me at all, but you do have to believe the Word of God that's written and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It has power. It has life-changing power. And that's what we have to believe. It's the Word of God. So I have for you in your booklets the scriptures to follow along with, if you would like to uh, read the scriptures as I'm speaking. And I'll also read them out to you. First thing I want to do is our traditional Easter greeting. I will say, He is risen! He is risen, He's risen indeed. He's risen indeed. That's the response. Let's do it once again. He is risen! He is risen indeed. Amen. This is the traditional greeting. And I want you to do one more thing. Look at the person next to you and let them know this great news. Tell them, He is risen. And respond, He is risen indeed. What wonderful news. It's a day of victory, a day of rejoicing. And after the long season of Lent, where we took time to examine ourselves and our relationship with Christ, it all culminates in this day, Resurrection Day. So I want to read to you from the book of Romans, uh, chapter 5, verses 6 through 9. It says this, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commends his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. What great news, wonderful great news. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid the ultimate price that we owed because of our sin and rebellion against God. He paid that price while we were yet sinners. When we believe this, that this is the truth and not just a story, then we can receive the free gift of salvation that Jesus paid for in his blood on the cross. Let's read about that from Romans chapter 10. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's that simple. Isn't that amazing? He didn't make it difficult for us. He said, believe in your heart. He said, confess with your mouth, and you shall be saved. We didn't earn it. We surely don't deserve it. And there is nothing we can do to add to it. Salvation is a free gift, yet it costs Jesus his life to give it to us. No more are we the enemies of God, and no more do we fear the wrath of God. No more do we face the penalty of death for our sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid it all, once for all, with his death on the cross. What great news! What cause to celebrate. Let's read from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time, without sin, unto salvation. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, how much more shall he purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? 
This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Isn't that great news? This is God's word. I didn't make it up. I didn't write it. You don't have to believe me. Believe God's word. It's the truth. That's important for us to know. What we celebrate today is not only Jesus' sacrifice by death, but we celebrate his resurrection. Let's read one more verse out of Hebrews. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he is now set at the right hand of the Father. Amazing, amazing. He knew the end from the beginning. He knew ahead of time what would happen if he were to not just die, but to be resurrected. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. That to me is amazing in itself, that Jesus would do something like that for sinners like us. Let's read that story. Let's read the story of the resurrection directly from the Bible. We're going to go to the book of Luke, chapter 24. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed about this, Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things to the eleven and to the rest. These incredible verses. Wow. I mean, there's, there's no more penalty for sin. But Jesus rose from the dead three days later just like he said he would do it. Hallelujah. Amazing. So why is that resurrection so important? What does that mean? Let's read Romans chapter 8, 31 through 34. It says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us, how shall he not with him also give us freely all things? Who shall lay any charge against God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, and that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Jesus died and rose. God can give us now all things freely. Every spiritual blessing, everything that we need for life and godliness, he gives it to us now freely because Jesus rose. God justifies us from every accusation that the enemy throws against us because Jesus rose. He now frees us from all condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus because he rose. He intercedes for us. He's now our high priest that ever lives to make intercession for us before the Father in heaven because he rose. That's very important, isn't it? And that's just the beginning. Let's read from Hebrews once again. I used a lot of verses out of Hebrews because I love that book. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 9, it says this, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And in Hebrews 7 it says, Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost. Remember Hosanna. Save us to the uttermost. 
them that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever lives to make intercession for them. Mm -hmm. So now, besides those other things, Jesus has become our high priest because he rose. His blood purges our conscience because he rose. And he saved us to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. Hosanna. All because he rose. These things are only ours because of the resurrection. So now how do we respond to all of this? Let's read Colossians 3. It says, If then, if you then are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Now we have to change our focus. We now know that our true life is in heaven with Christ. So we set our minds and our hearts on things above, not just on the things of this earth. That's how we are to respond. And again in Colossians 3, we're going to go on and read the fourth verse. It says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. There is a future hope that he speaks about. The Bible says when Christ comes again, we will be with him in glory. And that's exciting. That's something to look forward to. And it could never be if it weren't for Jesus' resurrection. Think about that. If he died for our sins, wonderful sacrifice. But if he was left on the cross, none of these things would be ours. He must have had to overcome sin and death and the grave by rising again on the third day just as he said he would. So now let's read about that future plan he has for us in 1 Thessalonians. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. What a great hope for the future, all because Jesus rose. Mm -hmm. How wonderful is that? We're going to have communion for those of you that would like to participate. Um, Jamie, if you could help um, Perry, and they're going to pass grape juice and crackers as symbols of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're a believer in Christ, you're welcome to join. And it's completely up to you. Nobody's going to say, oh, that's bad if you don't do it. So it's, it's entirely up to you. But as they're passing that around, Phil and Tom have some things that they would like to say. Okay. Do you want to take it straight away or pull on to it? They can hold on to it. Okay. Last Sunday, Palm Sunday, today, Easter Sunday, seven days. The events of those seven days changed everything. For the course of human history was changed forever in just seven days. Palm Sunday to today. They call it Passion Week. And if you look at what happened on each day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's incredible that in just that time period, so many things happened. So many events took place that changed everything. Now there are scoffers, there are non-believers that say, well, Jesus was just a guy. Well, I ask you why over the last 2,000 years, 2,000 years, why have so many songs been written about just this guy? Why have so many books been written about just this guy? We know why. He was the Son of God. And His actions in that one week, that one period of time, change the course of human history forever. 
And I think sometimes, especially now today, that, that reality, those facts have gotten lost. Somehow, some way, somewhere, through the course of time, they've gotten lost, the importance of them. Jesus was more than just a man. He was more than just a, a good teacher, a good rabbi. Think about what he did on Good Friday. After, after being praised, triumphal entry into Jerusalem, things were set into motion that by the end of the week, he was betrayed. He was put on trial. He was mocked. He was beaten. He was tortured. And then he was crucified. And three days later, what happened? He is risen. The grave couldn't keep him. Death could not stop him. This, this guy, just this guy? No, absolutely not. And I really want you to take this and, and absorb it. He was, he is the risen Son of God. And He took your sins and my sins upon Himself and carried them to the cross. But praise God, He didn't stay there. He did not stay in the tomb. He did not stay dead. And over 2,000 years later, we're still talking about it. We're still singing these songs. We're still reading, reading these books. 2,000 years. His message has been carried on the most powerful love that you will ever, ever experience. And I echo just what Kate said. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, now is the time. Get on board to this amazing journey with the Son of God that would start today with you and end with you in glory, in paradise, with Him forever. Now it's a choice that's made between eternal life and eternal death. You can't dispute those facts. They are what they are. And one of the most important events that took place to me, and I get so emotional about communion. Sorry. I wrote a song. I, I started to envision that, that night, the last supper. Disciples to the, to the right and to the left. His brothers. His beloved. Just spent three years with them. Traveling everywhere they could. Teaching, preaching, and healing. And now Jesus. I, I imagined Jesus' heart was breaking because he was going to have to say goodbye for just the time that he was going to have to say goodbye and they were going to be separated while he went to the cross and they went into despair. Mm -hmm. On the night he was betrayed. He broke bread. He said, my brothers, this is my body, which is broken for you. I want you to take it and eat it and do it in remembrance of me. 
And I've asked my brother if he will pray over the bread. What a blessing and privilege to share the body and the blood of Jesus Christ with all of you.
hope and our great promise. The last couple songs we want to sing with you. If you know them, please sing along with us. We're going to sing the wonderful cross towards the back of your book.
love that part that says, He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. How wonderful. It just wouldn't be right if we didn't end with this song that everyone knows. Summary morning. Yes. Yes. Praise God.